we go! Making his way down the aisle from Detroit, Michigan, weighing in at 174 pounds, he is J. T. Simmons. Black, obviously uncomfortable by JT Simmons. I know when I was up there, he made me very uncomfortable. It's just that mischievous grin. I don't trust him as far as I could kick him. JT paying homage to the late, great David Bowie. And introducing his opponent from the Aztec Jungle.
attacked by Max Holiday. I didn't do anything to the guy, but he decided completely unprovoked. That, thank you. After he beat up Matt Winchester, the Beer City Bruiser Ring of Honor Superstar, he decided that he was going to take his pressure out of me on a little pre-match ceremony. I didn't do anything wrong. Look, I wear glasses. I don't have 2020 vision. I wear a bow tie. I work in a bank and I'm not in the corner. I don't know what this is. You are simply doing your job, Johnny. Okay, I understand you, Mech, but he's wearing neon pink ultimate warrior. What? That's not native to the Amazon, I don't think. No, and I've been there. Mosquitoes the size of dinosaurs. Pretty good eating, though. But you need salt and barbecue sauce. Frank's red hot just in that bad ear. I see lots of weapons in the crowd, and there's fans bring the weapons match. JT, smart move, going for the legs of the big man. Hey, Ellen, can I give a cheap plug, please? Anything. I would love to give a cheap plug to my daughter, Hurricane Sophia Armani. She brought a championship belt to beat the crud out of JT Simmons. Well, let's hope she gets a birthday wish fulfilled tonight. I would like to see her eighth birthday know that she gave a beating to JT Simmons, the mayhem champion. I almost said midway. We already know who that is. That's Damien. Pumak working from the side headlock into a pinning predicament. JT gives up on the headlock. I don't believe pinfall submissions count in this. No outs, no disqualifications. These two met in December in a very wild brawl. They brought the weapons. This time the fans have brought the weapons. Connor and Elbow tie up. JT working that side headlock again. You know what, they, this crowd might be solidly behind you, Mech, but I don't care who you are. You get outside that ring, there's going to be somebody who doesn't like you. The great stipulation about Anarchy Pro Wrestling is this. If you're a fan and you hit me, I can hit back and you can't do anything about it. That's not fair. Look at that guy with the ball that go to. He brought a car bumper from the 74 no <laughs> And it's still shiny. I bet his wife ain't happy about that. His grandma's probably pissed. Probably picked it up at Victory Auto Records. 817 East Bensonville near O'Hare. the big man. Pushes JT in the other corner. Ooh, and a second chop. Why does JT Simmons have bloody handprints all over his body? That's a great question, Johnny. I'm not going to ask him, are you? Are you out of your mind? He terrorizes my, my, my wet dreams. I'm not going to have terror by my night dreams. forearm to the back of J.T. Simmons. How is he still standing? He's so demented, he's got, he just got three busted ribs and he's still standing. <laughs> Ooh! Fisher's forearm inside the face. He's not going to town. You know, I gotta be honest, I'm surprised that the stipulation hasn't come into play yet. It might start now. You might have gotten your Christmas wish a little late. I think I may have spoken too soon, Johnny. As JT disappears on the far side. Yeah, but he's got that special talent. He'll go underneath that ring and you'll never see him again. So what happens? He's gonna disappear, smoke's gonna come out from underneath the ring, we're never gonna see him again, so how does this one end? No contest, because the referee can't find him? Looks like Olmec oh, like found, found him, him. delivering some boots. I can hear those all the way up here in our broadcast position. You know what I'm missing? Bob Euchre and Mary Hurt. <laughs> what did I tell you, Gorilla? It's my little Jesse Ventura for you. If you don't know who he is, ladies and gentlemen, then you don't remember classic 80s wrestling. Look him up. You need to, you need to definitely Google the body. Not Heidi Klum either. Although she looks great naked. She looks great anyway. You got that right. Except for when she's wearing that, uh, that thing. That, that, what, 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 That's oh, okay. wedding ring. That's okay. You're pulling these out. Turn the tables. What is security doing? We didn't go down the floor. 
bar for this. Wow. Handing out weapons. JT with a vicious clear shot to Humack. He connected with all of that. Look at that chair, Ben. It's Ben, that's not easy. That's no joke. No, it's not. Oh, somebody's gonna bleed. He just stole a Pepsi oh! from the audience, took a sip, and then Humack in the head with it. And now he's laughing about it. He's demented. He's messed up. Dude, the is not right. Time to clean the blinds. And I do some HVAC, and that is a register from an air conditioning vac. Tech warrior. Oh, look at JT, he's not even running away. He's running toward him. He's that he's that stupid. He's that demented. Got that right. What is that? Squeegee? Clean up bio three, Kmart! Tomahawk with the squeegee. And he bent the squeegee. And that's not forgiving. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not forgiving. Do not try this at home. Get him, Sophie! doesn't run that later and cause an accident. Knowing, knowing anybody will be me. Somebody's going to have to put him back. He's going for the bumper. He's going for the second bumper. Oh! He's got the barbed wire wrap baseball bat. Shades of Terry Funk. Oh! Jack is Jack and Terry Funk would be proud right now. Right now, Abyss just got a little saucy. JT grinding that barbed wire in the bat into the forehead of Humac. He's already been busted open. Is Humac busted open or is that his war paint? Because he did come out wearing red war paint. No, I think he's lacerated. Oh, yeah, look at the side of his head. You're right, that could be his ear. Oh, he's holding off. JT he's doesn't have the strength to do it. Elbow to the solar plexus. Humac powers out. Drops his face on the ring apron. And that is unforgiving. There is no padding there. That is steel and wood. Right in front of my daughter's house. Oh, you were grinding that bat into the forehead. Shade her eyes. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? That was a pop single. That was a left leg. Simmons is luck. He took a boot off a fan. He grabbed a shoe from a fan. He's making sure JT feels a little soul tonight. Humex not a thief, he gave it back. The only thing Humex is guilty of is stealing the fans' hearts. Indiana Jones action with the bull rope. When was you making my dungeon? I mean, when was he at my house? Oh! This is shot with a stop sign. Do not collect $200. Do not pass go. Do not proceed to Park Place. I felt that up here, Johnny. They just stopped at Indiana Avenue. <laughs> He did. That is outstanding, though. JT also just delivered a vicious DDT. 
Why is he helping Humek up? You should keep him on his back. You keep him grounded, the giant can't walk. Don't give the giant an opportunity. Humek is 330 pounds of nightmare. Time to do the taxes. I still hate that he has my filing cabinet. Did your accountant know about this? No, and he should. He's Jewish. Like Sam Punk, my buddy. Are we going coast to coast? Uh, second time tonight. But I want to see JT pull us off. And he did. Right into the ribs of Humac. The vicious, vicious coast to coast a la Shane O'Mac. JT Simmons. Yeah, but Shane O'Mac never did it where the Siggy Stardust face. You got a point there, Jack. And covered in some human's bloody handprints, which very much terrifies me. And there's seven to be Humex handprints from the blood flowing from the forehead of the Aztec warrior. He's definitely lacerated from those uh, registers. Put your JT out. What you got in store? Nice elbow to the back of the neck of JT Simmons might have uh, rearranged his all. For the he's, he, just, he just stole the beast's rat tape. The madman from the Sudan, personally trained by Abdul the Butcher. He stole his cape. I wonder if Beast knows that it's gone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Akuma Koye has come back out to ringside carrying something in a bag, Johnny. No, that's not a bag. That's a body bag. There's a human in there. What? That's a body bag. Oh my God. When I was with the WWE, no. Undertaker used to do this every single Saturday. What has but JT done to this man? He would pull opponents, bring them down to the depths of hell with his tombstone pile driver, and then take them back to the locker room in a body bag. There's a human in there. I don't know if they're alive or dead. Human working over JT with that kendo stick. He's got it draped in the corner. There's something in there. It's moving. He's talking to it. Johnny, it's moving. I can't even pay attention to the match. JT's getting choked out by Humek, but there's something in that thing. He's tying him up in some sort it's of... It's moving. Did they beat up Jake the Snake Roberts and steal Damien? Oh, Damien got squished by Earthquake. Is that, is that Revelations, the white python? Humek is strapping JT to that camera stick. Like a water. crucifix, though. That's almost... That's it is. He's trapped. He can't move. You have grab the world's back. Oh, oh, oh. Lost the back of JT. Oh, he's going flying out of the crowd. Goose, goose. I'm up for goose, goose. That's what happens when fans bring the weapons here at Tons of Anarchy. Can I not? Going to town on the big man with it. Somewhere backstage, Beast is licking his lip and he's celebrating over this kendo stick that obviously was stolen from. JT unwraps the wraps around his hands and strangling the big Amazon warrior. Back into the ring they go. Huma clears the tape from around his neck. I still want to know what Akuma Koye brought out here. It's still moving. I think there's a python in there. Oh, and drop. So Moen dropped to JT Simmons by the former champion. Looking to regain his championship belt. Huma notices Koye. I don't know why Huma is paying attention to Koye. Unwrapping it. I think it's a python. I think it's a Burmese python. Oh my God. JT Simmons. Three count over the big man with another member of this army? What in the world?
some sorts. Akuma Koye coming out, still in a trance like state. Brought that bag out that contained this young lady covered in blood. Total distraction for you. First at this time from Chicago, Illinois, weighing at 225 pounds. This is the one and only Super Machine.
Slid into a hammer rack and floats over for the headlock. Side headlock takeover. Jojo looking for a leg scissors, and he's got it. Breaks through the headlock with a leg scissors on the head of Marco Cordova. Cordova powers out, got the front face lock. Mojo McQueen looking to power out of this. Fans, I'm joined back in the commentary position by Johnny Black. Hello, Ellen. It's nice to be back. It's great to be back. This is going to be a fantastic match. Marco Cordova is a legend all over the top of professional wrestling. And Mojo McQueen is no stranger to any professional wrestling organization. He has worked for everybody all over the Midwest, including his home state, Louisiana. I've seen this man hold three independent professional wrestling heavyweight championships all at the same time. Anarchy Pro, uh, then we can also say CSW Struggle Style Wrestling, uh, Homeland, which is uh, based out of River Grove, Illinois. And then the other championship was, oddly enough, was it? So Mojo comes in as a highly decorated veteran is what you're telling me. Absolutely. He was the best crawling champion. It's hard to say. Please. Marco Cardona doesn't share your affection. Let him know exactly what he thinks of Mojo. And Mojo delivers a boot to the face for his trouble. It doesn't matter. That's not going to stop Marco Cardona. That guy is a tank. He takes a beating and he keeps on going. He reminds me a lot of Craig the Hammer Valentine. Craig the Hammer Valentine was slow to start off his matches. He was like a diesel engine. But the more the match went on, the more it was no longer in your favor and more in his favor. Because as you got tired, he got stronger. And that's what Marco Cordova does. He gets stronger as the time goes on. He doesn't get more tired. He's scaringly shocked and shockingly scared. It's a great analogy comparing him to the Riley veteran. He's got his hand full right now with Mojo. Mojo's well, grabbing a chair. Alan, I'll tell you this. I've been in the ring with Craig Nairn Valentine. He ended my 13-year undefeated streak. For 13 years, I never tapped out. I've been pinned. I've been counted out. I've lost matches. I have never tapped out until I wrestled Greg Darren Valentine. Shortly thereafter, I wrestled Marco Cordova. Shortly thereafter, I tapped out. Too. And Marco Cordova has to see a dentist now. Coast to coast boot delivered by Mojo McQueen. Yeah. Yeah, took Marco right out of that chair. What is Mojo doing with the chair? He grabs that chair, it's all over. It's a disqualification. were for earlier in the evening. No special stipulations on this match. That would be an automatic DQ. Referee Jerry Gummo doing the right thing, directing traffic back into the ring. He's doing exactly the right thing. He's doing what a referee should do. You know, it's our senior official, Vince White. Vinny, I've known Vinny 20 years. And you know what? He plays favoritism. If he likes you, then he'll let things slide. If he doesn't like you, he's going to be all over you like white on rice or like a cheap soup. Like a cup and hype. Absolutely. Very great analogy, Alan. I'm proud of you. I didn't give you enough educated uh, correctness. I didn't give you a compliment on that. Now that's just foolish right there. You have the advantage. I don't understand what Mojo's doing here. Maybe just uh, wants to deliver more punishment in front of the fans. We've never understood the Buddha model. <laughs> and they do. Boot delivered courtesy of the fans here at the Berwyn Eagles Club. Wait a minute, I don't, I don't think that's a fan. I think that's Kevin Nash. Look, he's got the real world title. That's brown leather. I think Kevin Nash is here. From the WCW? I think so. All right. All I want to know is where's Scott Hall? Oh, he's sitting at the bar. Okay, we got it. Hey, yo. Give me another beer. Well, at least he knows what he likes. Mojo. It, it, it's Rocky Traffic. Oh, he's going to talk to the chair. Oh, he gets reversed. 
shakes it off, throws Mojo, and he takes a shoulder right into that steel chair. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. Mojo's down, and that chair is bent. Marco Cordova taking advantage of the situation, laying the boot to Mojo on the outside, and a vicious chop. Mojo returns the favor. That was a Ric Flair-esque chop from Mojo McQueen, and another one. It's like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. You read Ricky my mind. Ric Flair, 1982 U.S. Championship match all over again. Oh, I was going 89 Chi-Town Heat, but I'll look at 82 as well. Well, I said Roddy Piper, not Ricky Steamboat. Roddy Roddy Piper, what a crazy SOB he was. What a fan just throws. Mr. Sacco? Mr. Sacco makes an appearance here. Tons of anarchy. Oh, that's disgusting. That was just on somebody's sweaty foot. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the same sock that JT put down his backside. I do believe that's right. Yeah. Because if I did, I'd be throwing it up all over you right now. And you have a very nice $3,000 Armani suit. Afforded, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, by Santana Starks and Anarchy Professional Wrestling. Absolutely. Wow. T-bone suplex. T-bone suplex. Shades of Taz. And he was a suplex machine. Taz was great. Too bad he wasn't tall enough to make the cut in WWE. They cut him off with the legs. <laughs> That's not funny, but it's true. We have, a, we have a fan dressed as a referee in the audience. Three rounds, followed by a clothesline. Mojo, Mojo might bite my arm. up in the road. Teeter totters back in. Marco Cordova delivering a boot. Is the face of the turnbuckle. Vicious boots to the face by Marco Cordova. Cross and a knee. I've known Marco Cordova for over 15 years. That man has superiorly educated feet. Takes Mojo to the middle. Smart place to put him. One, two. Away from the he kicks out. You, you know the only chance you have beaten Mojo is to bring him in the center of the ring. Because that man does amazing and brilliant mythical things. When you think that you've got him beat, something changes and it's never good for you. I've been in the ring with him. I understand him. I'm afraid of him. He's got that mysterious box. I don't know what's in there. He seems to draw power from it. It's not allowed in airports. That's why he drives everywhere. He's not allowed to fly. He's on, he's on the knock on Pull up one, two. Marco Cordova kicks out a two. Homeland Security does not allow him to fly. Backslide. Cordova barely kicked out. Cordova's going for the X handle, but look at Mojo McQueen. All Deep those forearms. Down. That was eight right there. Oh, super huge clothesline by Marco Cordova. The guy is on fire. Brutal clothesline. Brutal him inside out. That would have ended most men's careers. I don't see Mojo coming back from this. It's elementary from here. And it's, it's all about the shouting. Two. Three now. Oh, what? Seriously? Two and not three. Seriously, Ellen, not three. Did I not? Did, am, I'm stunned. I, Ellen, you've known me for 15 years. I'm never speechless. And right now, I can't explain that. Four, I'm back to into the corner. Mojo's, he's, he's finding inspiration from something. So it's got to be that box. It's got to be that weird wooden metal box with all the skulls and candles on it. He opened it up, a mysterious purple plume of smoke emitted from that box as soon as he opened it. You know, the last time I saw anything like that was from a terrific wrestler from the late 80s, early 90s. His name was Papa Sh 
Papa Shango used to come out with a skull that omitted the same move. Marco Cordova going for a move, had it reversed by Mojo to a modified Samoan drop from the top. But I don't know who got the worst end of the deal. Look at Marco, he's, he's on easy street. Wow. Marco had to find everything he had in to his bread basket. Deep. He had to. He had to grab everything for his bread basket and pull it out. Because he's still reeling. He's lucky he's against ropes. He's playing it smart. Marco Cordova is not a stupid person. He's a very smart veteran. He's a ring technician. Mojo feeling the crowd here. Back to his feet. They're taking the zombie man and bringing him along a little bit, maybe. Blocks a punch. Throws a punch. Blocks a punch. Throws a punch. Another punch. Doubles up. Triples up. Head Head butt. Butt. Head butt. to the face. Marco got up. That's how bad of a dude Marco Cordova Mar 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 is. Getting up from a knee straight to the jack. chin. That's got to be it. No, look at him. Marco you are right. Him. He is one tough customer. I've been in the ring with him. He beat the crap out of me. I'm surprised, I'm surprised I survived as long as I did. Nice elbow Back to elbow. the chin. That's instinct right there. He was out of it on his feet. Absolutely. Nine balls in one, two, this can't be and it. And three! No, I can't, can. believe it. I can't believe it! Marco, Marco already had his shoulder up before the referee hit one. And then he put it back down just out of, uh, out of sheer, I don't know why. You know, it's often, it's often talked about, Johnny, but I've never really seen a display of testicular fortitude as oh. deep as Marco Cordova oh. is displaying for oh. us right now. Oh, the last time I heard something like that came from my friend Santa Claus. Santa Claus said that once. Or like 1,500 times all over the United States. Right here, in Berwyn, Illinois. Illinois. Very well He's played, teeing Mike. him up. He's teeing him up. Is this one going to be as good as gold? He's going to go for the rip breaker. The kick is up. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, got the him. T-bone. T-bone suplex. Second time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen the T-bone for Marco Cordova, one of his signature maneuvers. Is this enough to put away the big man from the bayou? I don't know, but I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised. Cordova lays this up. One, two. No. Got him, Mojo had to reach down deep himself. These guys have been laying it in very hard. I can't believe either one of them is on their feet. Marco Cordova pops up first. I'll tell you what, I've been in professional wrestling for over 20 years and I've worked for all the big time organizations. And I have never, ever, and I'm saying this now, seen a hotter show than the one I'm calling with you here in Berwyn, Illinois. Knee to the face by Mojo, that's gotta be it. Wow. out again, I can't believe it. I, I'm shocked. This audience is amazing. These matches are insane. This is what Anarchy Pro brings to professional wrestling month in and month out, year after year. And this is one of the premier professional wrestling organizations in Illinois today. Tons of Anarchy 2016 is living up as built. And this is just our first show of 2016. Imagine what's left to come this year. Well, funny you should say that, Johnny. March 6th, not, excuse me, March 19th. March 19th. We've got the Anarchist Brawl coming up right back here at the Eagles Ballroom. That is correct in Berwyn, Illinois. In Berwyn, Illinois. Berwyn. Home of Rich Coes, otherwise known as Sven Bully. Absolutely. On the WCIU, you can check him out uh, every Sunday night on Stooge Mania. Missile drop kick. Uh-oh. Shades of Arn Anderson. Nope. Oh, that's gotta be it. Dos Mio finishes it for Marco Cordova. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been informed by your official that the winner in 15 minutes and 16 seconds is Marco Cordova!
Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is a special attraction and is the battle of the best of champions. That means that there are three Anarchy Professional Wrestling Champions that will be battling in this very ring till there is one solid winner. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this contest is scheduled one ball with a 60 minute time. Introducing first, from Wrigleyville, Illinois, weighing in at 170 pounds, he is the Anarchy Pro Heavyweight Champion. The natural
Sheldon, who, quite frankly, isn't even tall enough to ride a roller coaster, <laughs> wants to look me in the eye and say that I am not a cruiserweight. I'll have you know, sir, that regardless of what you believe or what may be the fact, I'm trans. No, 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 not like a Caitlyn Jenner kind of trans thing. No. no, I am trans weight class. I identify with being far lighter than what I truly am, and sir, if you say one more word, I will sue you for defamation of character. Joey Britton, let everybody know where he's going. The Battle of the Best here at Tons of Anarchy 2016. Going to you live from the Berwyn Eagles Club. Referee Jerry Gummo calls for the bell. We're getting things kicked off. Joey Britton getting the crowd involved. Reminding us why we are here at the Berwyn Eagles Club for those dollar beers. Once again, a reminder, Anarchy fans, the Anarchist Brawl is March 19th, right back here in Berwyn, Illinois, at the Eagles Club. First to get things started here. Champion versus champion versus champion, and the heavyweight champion, heavyweight. Joey Britton gets a fist to the mouth for his trouble. Damian Tyler, a house of fire, taking on both champions. Marcelo Spade had enough of that. Dubs Damien outside. Oh! Referee Jerry Gummo checking on the fallen warrior. Joey Britton knocks the gum right out of the champion's mouth. Marcelo Spade, I guess he liked the flavor because he was none too happy about that. Joey Britton sent him in. Pop up! Pop up! Damon Tyler on the far side with the heavyweight champion sinks back into the ring. This is a close line with Joey Britton. Hard right hand, hard right hand, change of the American dream, play on a combo by Joey Britton. A one count mistaken by uh, the cruiserweight champion for a three count. That's why. Stop to the arm by Damian Tyler. Martello Spade still on the outside. Hard right hand by Damian Tyler. Jump Joey Britton outside. with a forearm to the chop for his trouble. Marcelo Spade sees the forearm. He dies to the outside. Cruiserweight champ.
up Joey Britton is really for another dive to the outside. Damian Tyler stops him in his tracks. Modified pump handle turned into a backbreaker. The heavyweight champion reeling. Vicious clubbing fist delivered to that rib cage that is under attack now. Our Anarchy Heavyweight Champion is in deep trouble. You okay? Damien Tyler keeping Joey Britton at bay. Has the champion in trouble. The Heavyweight Champion. Is that you have three checks and three? But you know what's surprising me is that Damian Tyler is kicking butt and taking names. He's bringing it to Joey. He's bringing it to Marcelo. I mean, he started the match that way, and he has kept up. He is taking on both of these champions, being a champion himself, but he's not winning, willing to back down from a challenge. If you if you've watched his career over the last nine months. He's taken a lot of back seat. He hasn't put the effort in, he complains a lot, he whines, he gets yelled at by the by the backstage area people. But then after all since he got that belt around his waist, he's been a change man. It's almost like he's got a new focus. And I think it's that belt around his waist. I think he gave him inspiration. I think he wants to fight now. Because he didn't win the belt on a fluke. He won it because he busted his butt back in December when he won it. And he's been undefeated ever since. Well, and as we were talking about earlier, Johnny, gold means green. Gosh darn right. Remember what I told you? When I was the champ, I made more money. If I didn't have the belt, I made less. If I was the champ and I won my match, I made even more money. And you know my daughter, Sophia, so you know what I'm fighting for. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am very proud of Damien. I'm gonna say it right now. I am proud of Damien Tyler, the midway champion. I, I'm gonna say it honestly. And if, if the fans at home don't like it, I'm sorry, but I bet our kids. I saw him as a sleeper in this match, and I am very surprised at the effort being put forth here by Damien Tyler. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna play the devil's advocate on this. You know who's disappointing me? And it breaks my heart to say this. I'm disappointed in Joey Britton. Where is he right now? He left the ring. And the referee can't count him out. A midway champ and a heavyweight champ still a toe to toe. Yeah, the midway champ and the heavyweight champ still going to toe But the cruiserweight champion left. Disappeared. I don't know where he is. I can't see him from my vantage point. Oh, let's get the cameras. Joey Britton's at the bar. Joey Imagine Stone. that. Ordering up a beer. Well, he's going to with it. Maybe he needs a little liquid courage. Two count in the ring by referee Jerry Gummo. You know, this is a one fall match. 60 minute one fall match. So a going for the Avalanche Smash. Maybe Tyler moves out of the way. He needs a turnbuckle in those injured ribs. And another vicious blow to those already damaged ribs. But that was a great forearm throw by Damian Tyler. Well, that was two dollars well spent, wasn't it, Joey Britton? He didn't even get the sip on that beer. I think the crowd enjoyed that more than he did. Yeah, they're wiping their brows now. Kevin Nash is licking his eyebrows. Damian Tyler. He's got holes down there on the floor with a straw. Damian Tyler keeping focus in the ring. Oh, on nice a to the solar, so to the solar plexus. And he takes off the suspenders. Nice knee to the, to, to the sternum. What's he going for? What, what is strap back supposed? up? Yeah, but what is he redressed him? But powerful enough to look like by Joy Britton. Back in the ring, wasn't, wasn't counting on that. Joy Britton's taking off the elbow pads. 
He, he he's taking off, off the beer gloves. Yeah. What should I bring and take it? I don't know what he's doing. He, he's unraveling. Taking way too much time. These are all champions in the ring. You he's, can't waste that kind of time. That might be loaded. I don't know what that's made of. He just turned Damian Tyler inside out. The midway champion has just been docked at O'Hare. I haven't He's seen not a clothesline in Milwaukee. I haven't seen a clothesline like that since the Kia Koloff Russian sickle. Oh, what the beautiful days though where I remember when he did that to Sting. I was thinking shades of Stan Larry Hansen. He was the AWA World Heavyweight Champion. He did that to Hogan in Japan. It's awesome. He's calling for the finish. He says it's over. Power bomb by Damian Tyler. Mike Pitt, the Anarchy Pro Emily Champion. Two count. Marcelo Spade kicks out. Damian turns his attention to the Cruiserweight Champion, Joey Britton. He's got the cross face. The cross face the chicken with uh, cross face the arm. Yeah. He's got the step over to cross face, STF. Change of Mark Bagwell. Nice kick with Marcelo Spade to the chase. That'll re that'll realign your dental plan. Absolutely. Very happy dentist come Monday morning when Damien comes to call him. Knee to the solar plexus, sends him into the corner. Joy Bishop all the way through the post. Joy Breton takes a pole. And not in a good way. Texas Clover Leaf! Texas no, Clover Leaf! No, no, no. He didn't step over. He's got the knee in the back. Super kick by Joey Britton. Marcelo Spade just became a wreck. Joey Britton slamming the heavyweight champion to the mat. The cruiserweight champion who outweighs the heavyweight champion. You gotta love it. You gotta Two love that. Broken up by Damian Tyler. He's still in this fight. Post it again. Damian Tyler is, is impressing me more and more as this contest continues. I am just impressed with this Gary Coleman. You know, Kevin Hart lookalike. I mean, what you talking about, Johnny? He reminds me of a man but he should be as black, cold, and dead as my liver from all the beer I drink. But he's still in this. It's amazing. I am impressed with the midway champion. And being the smallest champion in there, he is really bringing the fight to these guys. And the best part is, he outweighs that way champion. He's the midway champion. Oh, what is this sick twist thing? Ducks the blow Gets Joey Britton out of the way. Smart, I, smart of Kevin Hart. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Give me a second, Kevin Hart. Spear! Spear on the outside by a heavyweight champion, Marcelo Spade. He's fired up. He's back in this match, ladies and gentlemen. He's got his sights set on Joey Britton now. Joey Britton is not impressed me in this contest at all. I've seen nothing out of Joey Britton. And a kick out. That doesn't even impress me. I am, I'm so disappointed in Joey Britton, the Cruiserweight Champion in this contest. He has done absolutely nothing. But I'll tell you what. He did spill a beer with style. Old style. Marcelo Spade is setting up the Cruiserweight Champion. Joey Britton turns the tables. Damian Tyler needs to get back in that ring because all it takes is a simple three count and this contest is over. Do it, Joey! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Joey looking at the top rope. He steps outside. Joey Britton Joy might be spreading some fire right now. Do it, Joey Britton might be spreading some fire. Is he going for the 450? I don't know. There's Damian Tyler. Tyler spots him. Look at Damien Tyler showing some gum shit. 
he wants his belt back, he'll get his chance next month. March 19th, Anarchist Brawl. Bull Dempsey, fresh off of a run in NXT, making his Anarchy Pro debut at Anarchist Brawl right here in Berwyn, Illinois at the Eagles Club. The champion is reeling. Three vicious power bombs. The last one on the belt. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a concussion. 